Hello and welcome to Extra Shot. This is the show that puts the dessert and coffee options along with the smorgasbord of main courses delivered during the DSP Leaders World Forum that you can find online at Telecom TV. My name is Ray Lemaitre. I'm the editorial director at Telecom TV, recently joined, so still on probation. Need to watch my P and Qs. And uh, I'm here to host a short series of programmes, the Extra Shot programmes, that look back at some of the key topics discussed during the online event. Now, I'm going to be joined by a series of guest speakers who are going to come on and talk about some of these topics. But in each programme, I'm going to be joined by my colleagues and, should I say, friends, Guy Daniels from Telecom TV, who bravely hosted all, uh, all of the DSP Leaders World Forum sessions, and he's still recovering as a result. And also Chris Lewis, the MD of Lewis Insight and one of the best known analysts in the industry. Gentlemen, welcome. All right. Nice to be back. Thank you. So as you can see, we're in the Telecom TV virtual coffee shop. And one of the things we're going to be talking about during this series of programs is the, the coffee choices, the, the hot beverage selections of our special guests. Um, and so we're, what are we going to be talking to, about today, apart from coffee? Well, we're going to be talking about 5G and Edge. Those are the two key topics in DSP Leaders World Forum that we're going to uh, talk around today and have a bit of a discussion. But we are going to start off with that, uh, that coffee theme. Uh, and we're going to find out what our special guests, who we dialed into and chatted to earlier, what their preferences are on the coffee front. So we're going to start by speaking to Matt Johansson, and he's a Senior Market Marketing Director at Ericsson's Digital Services Unit. Are you in the coffee fan club, or are you in the tea fan club, or neither? Uh, I'm in the coffee fan club, definitely. Okay. And, and and what is your what is your go to roasted bean beverage of choice? Are you a an espresso person or, or or a bucket of latte? What's your what's your what's your coffee of choice? Well, my coffee of choice is actually a cappuccino, uh, preferably okay. Italian style barista machine type of thing. Okay, Ericsson's very own cappuccino kid. I'm glad he did not go to the British version of cappuccino. He would have got something very different from the Italian. Um, so now let's hear from BT's Neil McRae, and he's got an incredibly long job title, which is Managing Director, Architecture and Technology Strategy, and BT Chief Architect. Neil, are you in the coffee fan club or the tea fan club, or neither? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in neither, really. I, oh, the really? only time I... I never drink coffee. I mean, I must be the only guy in technology that doesn't drink coffee. Um, I can't stand the stuff. I'm a Diet Coke addict. Right, um, right. And, and, and throughout this COVID period, well, most people were panic buying toilet roll. I was panic buying Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're the go-to guy then if we, if we need a, an extra... Extra shot of no, Diet Coke. You know, no, no, no one's getting any of it. It's all mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we know where we stand, Neil, on the Diet Coke front. And, uh, and we also know who was hoarding it during the February and March months. Um, so uh, Neil was uh, one of the uh, panelists on the DSP Leaders uh, 5G session. And uh, one of the key takeaways from that, that great 5G session uh, was that communication service providers, I think, have realized that they simply cannot do everything by themselves. They need to get closer to their enterprise customers. Uh, and there was a lot of talk about the co-creation of services and applications and so on and so forth. Um, so a uh, guy and Chris, I mean, what, what were your thoughts on that on that 5G session? And do you think that the, uh, the, the telecom operators stand uh, a better chance than they have done in the past of getting closer and better understanding those enterprise customers? I, I think the point around co-creation is absolutely critical. The fact is that telecoms providers have been so accustomed to have people come to them and fit their, their businesses or into the ways in which telcos work. And we're at a real step change point now where they, they really need to adapt their services around those customers. Hence, early 5G deployments for the private network side 
with, with especially in the manufacturing area for example then definitely the integration as well as the technology for connectivity and especially vertical knowledge as to how manufacturing works so yeah co-creation very very important yeah i guess the question guy is whether they can do it because i remember back you know uh, unfortunately it was in the last century when you and i uh, both shared the same office and the discussion then uh, was uh, can the telcos um, deliver uh, some decent enterprise services uh, and can they crack that market? And that was like, you know, 25 years ago. Can they do it now with 5G? I'm pessimistically optimistic. Um, can, can, I'd like to... Get Hang on, fence. I'll get a fence. Um, Where's a fence? Can we get a fence? For guys? <laughs> <laughs> can they do better than they have done um, for all these recent decades yes they really really have to do better i'm sure they will do better will they do enough that's another matter i mean there's so much focus now on 5g core it's like we've moved away from the the radio interface um when we talk 5g and if you like true 5g it's 5g core 5g core well you know we never really talked epc with with 4g and lte to the same extent um I don't know how much of this is just all smoke and you know redirection of of the of the hype. Um, I really hope they do better. I hope they leverage the tremendous amount of work they've put into creating this new five G core. Um, is it a little too late? There's big risk, but I I, yeah. I do feel that what something that Neil said during the the discussion, which was the you know do it in collaboration. There will always be um, enterprises want to do it themselves. Admittedly, yeah. But well, there will there's, be. There's, there's still a great opportunity for operators. Yeah, but that but that's I, the issue, isn't it? About listening, they, they need to listen to the way that businesses want to do things, rather than imposing, you know, rigid structures, which is what they've done in the past. So I think for me, that's the critical issue. So they need to have the the, the core of the core ready, all even slicing all the way through and available to be able to adapt around the business requirements. That that's the key for me. So there's a whole level of activity needed to make sure the offering is first of all as simple as possible. Uh, and frankly, and personally, I'm not sure 5G is absolutely the issue. I think it's a combination of, of both mobile and fixed, which is the issue for most organizations. And it's yeah. how you, ability to stitch that together, which is the real critical thing, which once again is listening to the customer and possibly even listening to channel partners. Well, that's a great point, Chris. And I think, you know, we've seen from some early research that, that came out a few weeks ago from uh, Omdia, which used to be Ovum, where they looked at some of the early 5G enterprise contracts and found that while the telcos were involved in most of them, they were the leading contract or the leading partner in actually uh, a, a small minority. Um, and there were systems integrators and other companies stepping in and being the lead player and sometimes in fact, the enterprise was was leading it themselves. And in fact, m mobile operators weren't even involved at all. Now, this is the very early days of 5G, of course, and there's there's limited capabilities at the moment. But that's not a great start. So hopefully that will give some of them a, a kick up the rear end uh, to actually uh, you know, walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Um, now, you mentioned uh, private uh, networks there. Uh, and when we spoke to, to Matt Sir Ericsson, this is a, a topic I raised with him. Uh, and whether if, if enterprises were going to build a 5G private network themselves, you know, they would probably need a 5G core. Well, does a 5G core that's suitable and sized and scaled down for an enterprise really exist? And are enterprises uh, even interested in this option? Let, let's hear what Matt's had to say. Uh, the answer is yes. We, we have already complete turnkey solutions. Uh, like a whole system in a box, more or less, co complete with both radio uh, dots that you could, you know, place out in, in whatever on-prem, 4G and 5G capable. And uh, with that, a complete core network, it's actually possible to have a community voice communication like IMS, etc. on it as well. We have enterprises that come to us and, and we have conversations ongoing. Primarily, we 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 sell these uh, these solutions through the CSPs themselves, and and then, I mean, for an example, we have one of the larger tier ones in the US who have already started to do this, where they would buy from us and and you know target enterprises in the, as part of their enterprise offerings and strategies. Okay, well, so interesting, uh, you know, Ericsson says it has a product, says enterprises are interested. 
I guess, you know, in a couple of years' time, we'll find out if, if any have actually taken the plunge and tried to do it themselves or whether, as some of the operators hope, that they might try it initially and then fall back to the operators and say, actually, this is pretty tough. Can you come in and, and do it for us? Um, Chris, a, a, any thoughts on how this might play out, this whole private networks uh, market? Well, I, I think it's indicative of the way the sort of ecosystem landscape is is moving, you know, so in, insofar as that Ericsson can go directly to, you know, a large manufacturing organization and work with them to build, to build it. And of course, in Germany, you've got some spectrum issues where they can actually get access to the spectrum, which, of course, completely rules out the telco. In other places, you know, in, sorry, in other places, in other verticals, then the telcos may have a little bit more expertise. So they may well, they may well be turned to to help out. At the end of the day, this is the complete 180 degree shift where it's about how the businesses themselves want to do things, what skills they think they have, what skills they think an Ericsson or other people providing private networks bring to the table and what skills the telcos bring to the table. And, and you know, bear in mind, we've not even touched upon the cloud providers yet. You know, while, while you and Chris were just speaking, I was thinking, well, maybe the standards bodies, 3GPP, um, could have an impact here because, you know, we are about to see a light version of the new radio come through the, the standards process, um, NR light, specifically for wearables. I'm just, so I was thinking, might we see a sort of light version of the, of the core um, produced through the, the, the specs? Um, but then you suddenly realise on the other hand, other side of that equation, that could be more detrimental to the telcos if, uh, if the bodies are producing um, a more enterprise-friendly, smaller core for the for private net, or not, we can't call them private networks, can we? We have to call them non-public networks or NPNs. We have to have three well, letters in our acronyms. Yeah. <laughs> you can call them that if you want. I'm sticking with uh, uh, FPNs, five G networks. Um, so the other key topic on today's uh, extra shot is uh, Edge, and we had a, a great session called uh, Edgenomics, looking at the, the business case for Edge rather than the uh, technology uh, side of things for a change. Um, and I thought it was a great session, but, uh, but Chris, I know that Edge is not a topic that really tends to float your boat. Is that correct? <laughs> It's a, you know, as an analyst, you're always looking for to how do you how do you frame things, how do you look at things. The problem I have with Edge is that, depending on who you're talking to, they have a different definition and a different interpretation of it. So the the Edge from an enterprise point of view, obviously, is looking out from the enterprise to where that and that Edge could sit within the enterprise. Obviously, from a mobile point of view, that could sit against the base station, which then also brings in the web scale guys who might also be able to to co-locate at the edge of that base station to get better service. So edge, edge is a multitude of things. It's not, it's not one thing. And therefore, looking at the economics of it, you know, is, is, is a major challenge. And I know there's definitely, I mean, we, we got some feedback uh, during the, 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 the DSP uh, Leaders World Forum from, from audience members saying that, uh, you know, what they were hearing about, you know, some options where, where operators would build out edge capabilities because they were sure that uh, business opportunities would arise. And this was a bit bit like the build it and they will come approach that we, we heard about and saw during the, the tech bubble 20 years ago. Uh, Guy, are you kind of concerned that, that that situation might happen again or do you have a bit more more faith in, in what the, the operators are talking about these days? Oh, I'm, I'm very concerned we'll see this again. Um, and I think one of the one of the added complications with Edge is you've got to build out a lot of infrastructure. You, you've, you've got a big investment. You've got to cover a geographically big area if you're offering a comprehensive Edge service. So in a way, you know, damned if they do, damned if they don't. Um, you, you've, got to, you've got to put some faith there and build it out and, and hope that services will come. Otherwise, you just, they just won't get there. So, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, the, the build it and they will come, you know, is the might be a, a bit of a generic approach and something that suits some operators. But for other operators, there's very much a focus on let's find the use case and then build around that. And I guess that's that's very, uh, you know, uh, comes back more to what the, the customers need, which was what we were talking about in terms of the 5G enterprise. Um, so let's find out then on on that very case on, on that use case specific uh, edge topic uh, what Neil McRae at BT had to say when we talked to him. 
I think in the early days, you know, we kind of had this view that we'd be sticking servers at every base station. And, and I kind of thought about that and thought, really, what are we going to do with them? Um, and by the time we've done it, Intel have launched three new CPUs that are twice as good. We've also been watching what's going on and influencing, influencing the direction of it through, through the thousands of different standards forums we have to go to these days. We see a need for bringing compute capabilities closer to our customers, absolutely for sure. I still think we need to bring video content closer uh, to our customers. And, and I think that's a natural evolution of, of how video has grown and, and evolved over the years. And interesting as well, Chris, that you mentioned, uh, you know, that the, the COVID pandemic was bringing some or forcing some operators to, to reconsider their plans. Um, in speaking to Neil further, he, he actually talked about how BT had been using uh, that time to consider some of the other options around edge computing. So let's see what he had to say about that. If I think about COVID world right now, Ray, we're playing with a use case right now, which we're calling virtual product design, where you can use a, a really well powered, actually NVIDIA powered, we're working with NVIDIA on this, um, server that's got a big graphics processor, the type of thing that you know people use to play video games, but optimized for the edge. Um, you can design your product using that compute. Um, it can give people a feel for stuff. And, and as well, where we're working at home right now, that could, could be a way for folks in, in that sort of manufacturing space to develop uh, their product productivity. When you're a designer and you've got latency or you've got lag, that just doesn't work. And I think Edge is, is, is potentially a, a helper there. Still a lot to work out, but, but uh, it kind of feels like a direction to go in. Okay. I mean, interesting. It certainly sounds like BT has targeted some specific use cases, but I guess as well, then it comes down to what the business model and return on investment might be on those efforts. It does. And it, once again, it's this, it's this thing we've been talking about for years and years about listening to the customer and the industry that claims to have been customer centric. I think it hasn't been very customer centric, but it, it is beginning now to, to realize it has to be. And that, that's a combination of both getting the fixed and the mobile broadband connectivity right in whatever mix people want. And then it's working with partners, whether it be a, we might, we might in the past have called a content delivery network to get, to get video out as close to the edge as possible, uh, or, or on whatever the, however the device people drive the business. So it's listening and working. It goes back to that co-creation we talked about at the very beginning, that it's, it's, it's not, Telecoms and connectivity should not be discussed in terms of technology. It should be discussed in the context of what people are trying to do with it. And, right. and, and that's, that then goes down into the, the consumer market, uh, obviously exacerbated by working at home under COVID. Uh, it goes out to the business market, perhaps accentuated as we move towards more SD-WAN, you know, and with, within which 5G plays a role. But 5G is not the be-all and end-all in this. It's one of the tools in the locker. Do, do you think, Ray, that in a way, what... What we've done in this in DSP leaders is is um, focus on the economics, focus on the business models, move away from the actual technology as such, and, and maybe we're our own worst enemies by by fixating on edge. You know what is edge? It's an extension of what they're already providing, uh, and we should look more at um, coming from a service angle. Yeah, I mean, I think that that plays back to um, you know what we were talking about in that that five G enterprise that. Uh, collaboration and co-creation and, and guy you mentioned there that um you know that the edge concept or the edge topic can be a little bit nebulous uh and that's probably why our our bt man on the spot decided that he would come up with a a a, a tale a, an idea that would make us yearn for that retail experience that uh, some of us may be missing but not all of us i hasten to add so let's hear what he had to say about how bt might engage or see how it might engage uh, with its customers over Edge. Imagine what we were trying to do in Edge. We opened up a shop called Edge. How do I get the customer through the door? What is he looking at? What are the terms that I'm selling him to? Why does he go out with a carrier bag full of BT Edge with a big smile on his face thinking, <laughs> excellent, I've bought this thing. And and when you start to look at Edge like that, it gives you a different lens about, okay, this is this sounds easy, 
Um, but I think we've got a lot of work to do. I think the way that we really get the value out of, uh, of Edge and, and actually out of technology increasingly is much more around that collaboration aspect. How do we really change the way we work with our customers and with our communities and with our ecosystems such that it's, it's, mu it's a lot less siloed, a lot more open to risk, you know, taking a bit of a risk on something and then failing fast and moving on to, to, to the second version of it so that we really can position technology and position the network in the life cycle of companies and make a real difference to what they're doing. Okay. So, I mean, maybe the, the, the concept of the, the BT Edge shop uh, might sound a little simplistic, but I mean, he's making a great point here and that's a very customer centric way of looking at the situation, isn't it? It, it is. I, I think the, the interesting thing there is that the um, the edge is a combination of various industries, isn't it? So if you talk to many people, they talk about the combination of compute, connect and storage. Now, on top of that, you've, you've then got applications and you've then got data and AI in my mind. So it's, those, it's the confluence of all of those things where value will really be created because that's the way in which we'll improve you know, collaboration applications or video consumption or gaming consumption. So it's, it's about working with other industries. A uh, great point there, Chris, and a great point to, uh, to, to finish up this, this first extra shop program. My coffee cup is a little bit empty. I can hear the beans in my kitchen calling me. Uh, so I think we will what, what call it. What beans are going in there, Ray? Uh, organic Peruvian from the Algerian coffee stores. I, I got a delivery. I got in there as soon as that website was open. We, we, we haven't come across anybody that's, uh, that's uh, talked uh, purely about tea yet, but I'm sure we'll get to that at, at some point. Or, or, or go straight to the cocktail. We need a leaderboard, don't we, Ray? Oh, yes, yes <laughs> we, we do. We need like a big leaderboard. We need, we need coffee, we need tea, we need ooh, soft drinks, um, but uh, cocktails. Yeah, yeah Diet we, we Coke. Uh, you know, and hats, hats off to Matt's for his espresso machine and you know, his fine coffee. That's good. Neil, <laughs> I'm sorry, he's just letting us all down <laughs> with your Diet Coke. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm feeling a little bit depresso right now because it's been a while since I've had a happy cup of joe. So uh, thanks Very for good. joining me today on the first Extra Shot program and uh, look forward to talking to you again on the next one where we'll be delving into some of the more key topics that were covered in the DSP Leaders World Forum. So thanks, Guy. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, everybody out there for watching. Stay safe and keep grinding.